Uh, our Christian Amanpour, a host of Amanpour on CNN International, is joining us now uh, from New York. So is Bobby Ghost from Time International. Christian, you spoke with a former uh, Ukrainian prime minister, a woman who was in jail under the last uh, president, the president who fled a little bit more than a week ago. She is a, a key player here on the ground. Uh, what did she say in terms of what she hopes to the, the involvement in terms of, of, of the United States and the European Union. She's clearly looking to the West for as much help as possible. That's right, and she is a major power player, uh, a political figure in Ukraine right now. She said first and foremost that she's appealing to Ukrainians to stay cool, to stay calm, and not to give Russia any more pretext to increase its military incursions. But she also said, as we talked, that she was very concerned that the Russian parliament was debating a draft bill about annexing Crimea, Crimea. and she said that she absolutely needed Western help because fully understanding the, as she put it, balance of power between Russia and Ukraine, as Spider Marx told you, Ukrainian forces are no match for the Russians, and any military confrontation would end up in disaster for Ukraine. But this is what she told me about urgently needed help to stop Russia, as she put it, grabbing Crimea. If it is in hard times, Ukraine is left on its own and is given to Russia, and uh, it, when Russia is allowed to take away Crimea, then the world will change, and then not only politics and life in Ukraine will change, the politics and life uh, will change practically everywhere in the world, and then we have to accept to uh, state that in 21st century one country, an aggressor, can uh, violate all the international national uh, agreements, take away territories, whoever she likes. So obviously a very nervous Ukrainian interim government and authorities trying to figure out how to get themselves out of this terrible crisis. You were mentioning uh, people in the square there saying that they wanted to volunteer. Well, they have called up the mobilization of forces for training. And I asked Timoshenko, what was the point of this, given the unequal balance of power? And she said, look, yes, we understand that we cannot face off against Russia. But if uh, Russians do increase their intervention, go beyond Crimea into other parts of eastern Ukraine, then she said Ukrainians would give their lives to stop that. She said they already had in the square last week. And uh, she said that, you know, nobody wants this to happen, but that Ukrainians might feel that they were so upset they would have to actually give their lives to defend their country. And of course, you know that here, uh, sanctions are being prepared according to the State Department. Secretary Kerry is on his way to Kiev, to where you are, and there's some hope that there can be some kind of European mediated off-ramp for Russia, and maybe even some kind of mediated talks between Russia and the Ukrainian authorities. Anderson? Mm. And Bobby, I mean, to Christian's point, everybody says diplomacy is really the only way that this can end, that, that there is not a military solution here, certainly in terms of uh, involvement from other countries, and certainly Ukraine forces are not, are not really up to the battle at, at this point. How would that, what, what are the, the next steps for that diplomatic solution to actually get underway? Well, as, as she pointed out, the, the John Kerry is on his way to Kiev. Uh, the president and he have been on, been on the phone talking to European leaders and trying to come up with a with a united front and a united plan. But I suspect that the, the most important conversation that will need to take place is between Yulia Tymoshenko, the woman you just uh, showed a clip there talking to, to Christian, and Vladimir Putin. Um, we know he has said in the past he likes her. Um, she is from eastern uh, Ukraine herself, the Russian-speaking part. She is a major player in, uh, in Ukraine, despite being somewhat discredited for her own role in government. But she and, and Putin will have what might be the most meaningful talks. If the two of them can work out a deal, at least the, 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 out, the sort of shape of a deal, then that is something for, for Europeans and the U.S. to swoop in on, endorse it, and try and move it forward. Anderson. Uh, Bobby, I appreciate you being on, Christian, as well. You can obviously, Chris, uh, yeah, go ahead, Christian. 
No, simply to say I asked her about what kind of a, an agreement could be struck and some people including your former guests were saying that perhaps that February 21st agreement where uh, European leaders had had an agreement with Yanukovych to have elections next at the end of this year and to basically you know reduce the power of the presidency. I asked Timoshenko if that was a goer because the Russians are saying that too. We want to get back to the so-called February 21st agreement and she said to me in no uncertain terms no, yet, no way at all, she said, because what happened is that Yanukovych, in the interim, she said, has become uh, somebody with blood on his hands. You know, dozens of people were killed, and that would be returning Ukraine to a dictatorship after giving up so many lives to, to, to prevent that from happening. So it's going to be really difficult, but I agree with Bobby that, you know, Timoshenko does have a relationship with Putin. It dates back a long time. Whether it's still valid or, or we don't know, but there will be some very important discussions that need to be had between Ukrainian and and Russian leadership. Although, Christian, Ukraine officials here, and as you pointed out, the government here is very shaky. It's a, a new government and an interim president, a new prime minister here. They have already backtracked on some of the things that they had decided to do just earlier in the week in terms of uh, the, the use of the Russian language in, in parts of, of Ukraine. So they've already started to try to make some concessions on, on, on ultimatums they'd already uh, passed. Well, yes, and they've been urged by all their allies to do that. You know, that was one of the dumbest things that they could have done at the beginning. And certainly the Polish foreign minister, who was one of the key interlocutors in the attempts to resolve this uh, about a week or so ago, that February 1st, uh, 21st agreement, said that this was a really stupid thing that the new Ukrainian authorities had done. Um, and this is before this crisis developed into where it is right now. You know, coming up with edicts that would limit or ban the use of the Russian language. And they said that they had had to stop those kinds of things and basically reach out in a sort of a government of national unity or national faith or national trust or whatever words they're trying to use to make sure that they uh, show all of Ukraine, including eastern Ukraine and Crimea, that uh, they are a government for all Ukrainians. Uh, on the other hand, what Russia is saying about, you know, these attacks by Ukrainians against, against ethnic Russians is not, uh, uh, is not true in terms of the extent of the, of the sort of perfidy that right. Russia is painting Ukrainians of having committed. Yeah, there's certainly not the evidence of that on the ground at all in Crimea. Christian, great to have you on. Bobby, as well, when we come back.